amongst my few playmates, I was very unpopular since I would insist on playing out events in history or acting according to consistent plots. The children I knew disliked them and their romping and shouting puzzled me. I hated mere play and dancing about. In my relaxations, I always desired a plot. Letters from H.P. Lovecraft. Hello, and welcome to Vorpal Tales, the home of awesome adventures and terrifying tales. This afternoon, we are excited to resume the Call of Cthulhu campaign, Masks of Nyarlathotep. This is a long-running story about desperate, violent cults and the people who have decided to oppose them. Expect lots of darkness, horror, and insanity. If you still hunger for other Vorpal content, we have a plethora of amazing new shows. In particular, if you're a Mythos fan, we've got Delta Green on Monday nights, followed by Vorpal Tales After Dark featuring Mythos World. And don't forget to check out Akhtang Cthulhu, World War II meets the Mythos. If you just like horror, we've also got Black Void and Cult on Tuesdays and Sundays respectively. And if that's still not enough, how about Mage the Awakening on Thursdays, followed by Pathfinder, or Dungeons and Dragons on Saturdays. We're also going to have a fiasco game this Sunday. Stick around after this game, you'll catch us running Scarred Lands Draco Genesis. As always, stay up to date at our Twitter and Instagram. And if you really can't be without more Warble content in your life, come join our Discord. For tonight, spooky friends, introduce yourself and your characters to our audience, please. I am Dwayne. You guys can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi. Tonight, I will be playing a parapsychologist, Agatha Merriweather. Hello, I am Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama. And today, I'm playing Richard Schwarm, the lawyer. Hello, my name is Mare. You can find me at Oh Hello Mare on Twitch and Twitter. And tonight I will be playing Alex. And yeah. And I am Dave. I can be found on Twitter at Twin Dead Twitches. And I am playing Cliff Reynolds, the Explorer. All right. And I believe it's Mare who has volunteered to read the recap, if you don't mind, Mare. Yep, yep, yep. Uh... I apologize. That is the recap room? Oh, I didn't put it in the recap room. Oh, it's just the same document. I just put Oh, it. it's the same document? Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I didn't know. Sorry. Ah, I see. All right. Let me make this a little bigger. I'm so sorry. All right. The scene opens as we are in a hotel room surrounded by dead bodies. Colin and Cliff are bleeding out and need some help. The party tries their best, but has little effect on their wounds, and a displeased Colin cauterizes his wounds on a radiator. Due to the commotion from earlier, housekeeping is inquiring as to what's going on in the room. Agatha attempts to ward them away, stating that nothing is wrong at all. We search the bodies around the room, finding many articles to go over later, including an interesting symbol related to an African death cult. Collins recalls that a string of similar murders has gone down as of late. Around this time, one Lieutenant Leahy and Lieutenant Poole burst, into, burst down the door. Entering the room, they see the gruesome scene, an old man and the tail end of four escaping investigators. Lieutenant Leahy uh, catches up to the crew on the ground floor and attempts to apprehend them. Colin blends in with the crowd. Agatha pleads ignorance. Cliff and Alex fail their getaways. As Colin is getting away, he snatches Agatha's hand back to save the evidence for later. After some coaxing and fast talking, Lieutenant Leahy convinces the remaining party to come down to the station to give their statements. And thus, Cliff, Alex, Dickey, Lieutenant Leahy, and Lieutenant Poole head to the precinct. All the while, Colin makes his way through the streets, bleeding, and finally finds a street dot, and finally finding street dot attempts. And finally, finding a street dock attempts to fix him up. I can't read today. <laughs> Eventually, he makes his way to a VFW, where he is stabilized fully. At the precinct, Lieutenant Poole grills the team on the happenings in the hotel. They explain their relationship with one Jackson Elias, all the while Agatha reveals all about the encounter with the thugs. 
After the investigators leave, Lieutenant Poole reveals that to Lieutenant Leahy that he feels that this case is connected to the Harlem murders. He states that one Hilton Adams was already arrested for the crimes, but could have been arrested wrongfully. Insert a travel montage. We return to the scene of the crime and speak with the front desk. It seems that Jackson has been staying here regularly when working on a book and had checked in a week ago, but has had no visitors. However, one shady fellow has come seeking him out. With no further information to gain from the night, we head back to our hotel and bed down. The next morning, we meet for a bite and go over our evidence, where we are approached, where we are approached by one Lieutenant Leahy. We offer to work on work in tandem to assist in the investigation. Making a few calls and going over the evidence, we decided that splitting the party to hit several places at once is our best course of action. Over the course of our meetings, it seems that Jackson Elias was in search of rare texts. We, all, we also found that some correspondences with his publisher should uh, show a slow mental decline, bordering madness. Some further clues lead to an unsuspecting juju house located in New York. But the odds stacked against us in time of the essence. We decide... We decide our best course of action is to speak with the Carlisle sister, as their family safe may hold the secrets that we would require. Time to get on our fancy clothes. Show. All right. That's not as Thanks. 1920s as last time. That is so okay. <laughs> that is so okay. <laughs> It's perfectly fine. Uh, thank you for taking the notes and writing up the recap, and thank you for reading the recap, Mayor. So, in character, the date is Friday, January 16th. The time is one o'clock in the afternoon. Jackson Elias's funeral is tomorrow at 2 p.m. So, you have accumulated quite a lot of information. What would you like to do about that? I was told that I need to put on a dress and I am not happy about the prospect of that. Why not? Dresses are wonderful. Why would you do that when you could just cover all of the things up and the breeze doesn't bother you? It's a way to feel free. Not bogged down by all of these enclosures. Or a way for the man to keep you down. No, it's, it's, it's good to show a little ankle every now and again. Keeps the man wondering. All right. What would Dickie and Cliff like to do? <sighs> well, I didn't come to New York planning for fancy events, so I'm going to have to go get a, get a suit for this funeral. As part of my day. All right. Uh, what's your credit rating? 80. All right. You can definitely afford a very nice tailored suit. Well, at this point, I think we're going to need to go shopping for right. Alex and perhaps Agatha. I don't know. And maybe Mr. Schwarm? Schwarm's got a nice suit already. Right. I figured you're a lawyer, you know. Get some nice studs. While Agatha does have at least one dress <laughs> with her, uh, it is not something that you should probably wear to a funeral. Yeah. All right. So I guess that's what some of the group is doing, at least for part of the afternoon. All right. So you make your way down to the fashion district in New York City, which is, uh, you know, one of the biggest fashion centers in the world, uh, rivaled only by London and Paris. Uh, and on Cliff's dime, you can purchase whatever you feel like. So what sort of, what sort of duds do you wear to a funeral? Cliff is just getting a very nice black suit. Okay. 
Alex is taking a look at like black pants, just kind of seeing she'll be able to get away with that for a bit. Uh, yeah, they definitely have uh, men's suits in your size. Yes. She just keeps brushing her dusty hands. Like she's kind of not the cleanest. So she just kind of keeps trying not to touch things, wants to, but also knows that if they're like, you break it, you buy it. She's been in a few of those stores before uh, and uh, had to run away pretty fast. So, uh, cause she's got a credit rating of six. Okay, well, uh, so this is, uh... This is a fashion house, so the textiles are not exactly breakable. Oh, smudged. Yeah, but yeah. So yeah, so I guess uh, taking a look around and just trying to mirror whatever Mr. Reynolds is up to. All right. So uh, Cliff, are you taking them to a, a nice place, a mm -hmm. really nice place, or a really nice place? I'll take them to a really nice place. Okay. We're trying to make an impression on this lady. I think. Okay. Yeah. So, Alex, you have the strange experience of having someone fuss over you. Don't. Why do you keep poking me? Hey. And like they start measuring your inseam, it's kind of awkward. Uh, and give you a couple suits to try on. Uh, and as far as you can tell, looking at yourself wearing these suits in the mirror, it fits. But this attendant is like, oh, yes, we will just take this little bit in here and let out this hem here and starts like pinning things all around you. Mm -hmm. They're very good at their job, though, so they don't stick you at all. Yeah, I'm still watching them like a hawk because with the needles, it's like. <laughs> Cliff is just chuckling on the inside, watching this. Well, imagine right. how imagine how traumatizing it would be if it was an actual dress, though. At least I know how to wear these clothes. Yeah, uh, yeah, Cliff, you are also being fussed over, but this is mm -hmm. something that you're far more used to. Yeah. Okay. Agatha, what sort of clothes would you like? Agatha would get the, <clears throat> I guess, the standard uh, 1920s morning dress. You know, okay. black, long, you know, down to like the mid calf, uh, still showing the ankles. <laughs> um, All right. But since we are at a slightly upscale place, mm -hmm. um, instead of just the like the folds and frills that would normally go down the front, she would probably ask for some type of, uh, you know, embroiderization to go down the front to be, you know, just that, just that bit more pretty. And uh, uh, would yeah. definitely not have the veil hat, but the one that like comes out like a weird brim. <laughs> okay. Sounds like fun. Don't forget to get a handbag while we're here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my handbag. <laughs> you you do manage to get a new and very stylish handbag. Is it sturdy? <laughs> Seems like if I'm you... going to need something a tad bit sturdier. So it's sturdy-ish. It's made out of, you know, a nice heavy velvet. Okay. We'll throw, we'll throw a couple of extra rocks in there. It'll be just fine. <laughs> that's, a, that's what I'm imagining is Agatha is taking like a brick, putting it in the purse, swinging it around. See if yeah. it's sturdy enough. <laughs> okay. All right. So this takes a couple hours. They tell you to come back tomorrow morning and they will have all the necessary tailoring done. Uh, by the time you finish up, it's close to dinner time. Wow. They got any more of those strawberries? I 
Oh yeah, we did have strawberries for breakfast. Yeah, we had <laughs> strawberries for breakfast. Strawberry. Alex's first experience with fruit ever. Just like leave. Uh, they do not have strawberries. Those were a special treat uh, that had been imported, and uh, they're all gone now. I'm sure I can find a place where there's some more in there. <laughs> uh, I mean, it is January in New York, so that's oh. going to be tricky. Fair enough. Uh, you do find some apples. There are apples aplenty. I'll, rec I'll make arrangements for a car to take us all in the morning. And then I guess eat dinner and call it a night. All right. Well, since we're out. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a little bit of time to kill. Mm -hmm. We we are are we like we're, yeah we're in we're in downtown New York proper I I assume yes you are in the heart of Manhattan is that close to the location the address given for the Juju House oh uh no it is not because you are at the very fancy uptown place and the address that you were given is in Harlem ah. Did you want to swing by? I mean, we have time. Sure. So as far as just a, thinking through it, we've made it to the imports place. We've made it to, uh, you talked with the people about the publishing. We went to mm -hmm. the Times to look for the newspaper articles. And the... Uh, the Skylar Hall thing wasn't going to happen because it had already happened in the past. Yeah. It just I'm try trying to look through our materials, our evidence, and see if there's anywhere else, yeah, along that way, apart from the Juju house that we could go yeah. to. Uh, you can reach out to the guy who gave the lecture that you missed. Mm. Right. He's in, like, Boston now? Or uh, No, that's someone else. Oh, that's someone else. I believe he is in Arkham. Arkham. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, Dr. Cowles. Mm -hmm. Let's, well, I'm up for hitting the Juju house, Agatha. I mean, yeah, any, any more investigation that we can get done during the day, we might as well. Yeah. We'll burn it. We're burning daylight. Yes. All right. All right. Off to the Juju House. So you make the trip to Harlem. Uh, it takes a little bit of time. The subway is not as robust as it is in the modern era. And after about a half hour of travel, you arrive at number one Ransom Court. It's a rundown alley off 137th Street, east of Lenox Avenue. So the short alley opens into about a 20 foot square court. Uh, so the only doors you see are that four juju house and an abandoned pawn shop abandoned and, so there's, mm -hmm. and there are uh there are people around um you see some people uh just walking up and down the streets uh 137th streets going about their business uh there's also a couple just lingerers you see um you know, a couple people drinking something out of a paper bag. Delicious. <laughs> mm. uh, looking, know. looking inside the pawn shop. Uh, is there anything in there, or are the windows like 
glazed over. But the windows aren't necessarily glazed over as much as they're covered with a thin layer of dust. And so looking, the dust is on the inside. Oh. Um, I would, but, Alex would have still tried that because she's dumb. But yeah, know. I mean, you can still make out vague shapes of uh, cabinets and countertops and, you know, what looks like a run down rocking horse. Uh, you can tell those of you who are investigating the pawn shop that it definitely shares a wall with Juju House, and the way it is constructed may also share a basement. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Good to know. What information did we gain about the Juju House? Just that a one, what was it, Sing Kwame? Yeah, uh, Silas. Silas, yeah. Uh, let me get out my notes here. Silas Nakwame had come to Emerson Import. But we don't know why. Uh, you do not know why. Well, I guess we can try to find out. Yeah. That's the straight uh, up so, approach is the best approach. All right. So as you uh, are sort of hanging around in this um, courtyard, let's see here. Uh, Three, four. Let me roll a d4. Ooh, that came up four. So, Cliff, go ahead and give me a dodge roll. Nah. All right. I'm just gonna. Uh, let's see, Cliff. Can you do it? Yeah. All right. So, don't forget to mark the little tiki box. Uh, for a successful dodge roll. Uh, and so you look up just in time to see uh, huh. the, that above the pawn shop is a couple stories of tenement housing and someone has just started wringing out their laundry uh. out the window. <laughs> and you have avoided getting wet. Nice. All right. Hey! Hey, yourself. You want me to go get him, Mr. Reynolds? Nah, it's it's fine. It's fine, Alex. Let's just, uh, let's just go inside the Juju house. Get this over with. Oh, all right. Now, is this called Juju house? Or does it have an actual name? Uh, you don't see any signs. Oh. Hmm. All right. Well, hit the door. I mean, not not punch it, but I mean, try All the right. door. See yeah. if it's outside. See if see if it's unlocked. Yeah. So you get there. Uh, and so you find that they have just closed. Their operating hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. It is mm. closed on Sundays. Uh, and so what you see is the locked door. And then on either side of the door are those big display windows. Uh, but they're covered with fabric, so you can't see into the shop, but you can see an array of what appear to be African artifacts on display. Uh, 
uh looking inside do i see anything similar to the symbol that we found on jackson's body go ahead and give me a spot hidden roll ai as well yes anyone can nope Oh yes. no. I do. Nice. All right. Uh don't forget to check the ticky boxes. Okay. I have. All right. So you do not see any sort of cult symbol. Uh not even an impression in the nice fabric that the art and artifacts are resting on. Uh, but if you have anthropology or archaeology, you can make a roll for that. That I do have. It's not that great, but it's there. Have a one in each. Wouldn't <sighs> it be funny if? Nope. What was it? Sorry. Either anthropology or archaeology. Oh, yeah, they're both ones. Here we go. Ready? Uh, no, not even close. Oh, that would have been funny if that was a one. OK. Uh, all of you uh, examine the artifacts, and this these are styles and techniques that you are not familiar with. Like they look interesting, uh, but you have no way to determine if they are authentic or not. Hmm. I'll knock on the door. Okay, uh, so you knock and then someone from the tenement houses above helpfully shouts down they're closed i know i'm looking to talk to silas well come back tomorrow and stop making that racket they're closed tomorrow uh they're not closed tomorrow yeah they tomorrow saturday oh uh, i thought tomorrow was sunday oof. oof all right well i guess we can go what time is the funeral 2 p.m all right so we can come back when they open yeah we can come back in the morning yeah. All right. Do I see any entrances or any sort of uh like if I if I just were to casually shove on the pawn shop door, could I just uh see what might happen if I do that as we're walking by? Yeah, go ahead and give me a strength check. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm like, eh. Do I see what Alex is doing? Uh, Alex, are you trying to be stealthy about this at all? Uh, nah. It's kind of just like <laughs> jiggle the handle, shove, shove. Mm. Uh, yeah. Then, yeah, you can tell. And so, okay. Alex, you can tell that uh, it's probable that you could, like, force your way here or through the door um but uh this courtyard quite obviously has a good viewpoint mm -hmm. from the tenements and so they might spot what you're doing yeah uh just kind of glance up at the little rooms just kind of shrug shrug and i will you know? try to do it but on I'll try to be a little stealthy, but I'm not good at that. But I will try to force the pawn shop door open. All right. Go ahead and give me a stealth roll. Uh, sure. As soon as I find it. Here we go. Low numbers. Nope. Totally fail. All right. Uh, so, uh, okay. So give me another strength roll then, please. Oh. Yep. Okay, so uh, you managed to sort of like 
grab hold of the handle of the door and just pull sharply up and you can hear the wood crack as you break the lock. Uh, and then someone, uh, the same person, calls down again. They're closed too and they're not opening again. All right, well. Then I wait for them to go inside their window. Uh, you can tell that they're not. You, you are now the most interesting thing happening in their life right now. Alex would like to add, like, would like to shout up there. What happened to them? Why'd they close? Went out of business. Well, what for? Did they take all their stuff? Is something else open up here? Just ran out of money. I don't know. Did you know them well? Yeah. What about the folks next door? All right. And so now you see them. They shut up. Go back inside close their window huh. right nice talking to you too have a great evening and then alex just shrugs Some people hey. in different parts of town they're kind of rude it's open is it open he... the door's open you, you got it open <laughs> yeah it was open i don't know it's amazing all right so I would like everyone to now give me a spot hidden check. Okay, it's a success on that one. Regular success. All right, mm -hmm. mine did not register. Here we go. Oh, I made it. Nice. What about Alex? Oh, that oh, was a yep. big old fail for me. Yeah, that one didn't work. All right. I was too busy so, trying to look around. Agatha and Cliff, you quite easily pick up on the fact that uh, the winos are not as drunk as you would assume. And they are watching all of you very closely right now. Hmm. Yeah, at this point, Cliff doesn't, I don't, I don't care. I know they're watching me and I'm just like, I register it and I just, I just walk in. Quick, everybody okay. inside, shut the door behind us. And once right. everybody's in, I'll close the, I'll close the door and look for something to jam it shut. Yeah, there's just essentially a whole lot of debris here. So you can easily get a milk crate or something like that. Yeah, I'm just trying to like wedge it in the bottom of the door, like in between the floor and the door. All right, so you are now in the abandoned home shop. And so you can see a lot of just debris and detritus. So like there's a counter with a glass top and you can see these dusty velvet boxes that once upon a time would have held rings or watches. Uh, you can see a couple dented musical instruments in one corner. So nothing here is valuable. Like it's all worth less than a dollar, which is probably why when they closed up, they didn't take any of this with them. Or it could have been the reason why they closed up. Could be. Is there a any kind of like ledger or ledgers behind the counter? Uh, not behind the counter, but okay. you do come across a back office. Okay. Where there are a couple of ledgers, you also see uh, that there is a. A locked back door. Okay. Do we think that goes to the like rear alleyway or perhaps an office? Uh, it would go to the rear alleyway, but by the way that everything is positioned, 
uh, it would be a good place for you to perhaps watch Juju House without being perceived yourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alex, you want to look for a basement, see if there's any kind of basement door in this place? Yeah, I can look there. And then if we need that open, I can try to pick the lock too. Excellent. Got a little hand with that. Pending. Hit or miss. Yeah, so, so the basement door is not hidden, uh, but it is locked. And so you would need a locksmith roll to pick it. I'll give it a try. Um, um, oh, it's only uh, 15 luck. I know it's I only know. 15. Only 15 luck. All and right. is this for the, so you said both the back door and the uh, other door were locked? Both of them were locked? Mm hmm So can I, can I make a second roll and then whatever roll works, we will go if one other one so works? So I was actually about to start talking about this rule. It is called the push mechanic. And so what it lets you do is it gives you a second and final attempt to achieve the goal. And so the way it goes is you ask if you can push the roll. And then I ask, what action are you taking to push? And so it is, you can't do the same thing that you just did. You have to figure out some way to sort of go above and beyond. Now, okay. the flip side is that what you're doing is you are upping the ante, essentially. And so if you fail a pushed roll, the consequences are harder. So right now you have tried locks to pick the lock and you haven't succeeded. Right. Um, if you try and push the roll, something else will happen. I mean, we can kick down the door if we need to in the end. Someone else has a better strength roll than me if I can't luck. Okay, yeah, sure, let's do it. All right, and as a note, you cannot push luck, combat, or sanity rolls. But this is just a straight okay. skill roll, so that doesn't matter. Okay. Well, let's see what happens. Does anybody have a crowbar? Uh, not on me. So, just to make sure that I understand correctly. I mm -hmm. do have lock picks. Would I be using that same locksmith roll, but I would be using a different strategy roleplay-wise to try to undo the lock? Yes, which you should uh, narrate for the class. Okay, so first initial attempt at unlocking that was a failure was just an old set of lock picks like kind of rolled up in what would have been a, a little leather pouch tucked into her vest. And she just, you know, they're pretty banged up and old. And uh, in trying to do that, she she ends up breaking it and says quite a few unladylike words as it happens. Um, and now with the second roll. All right, well, so describe how you're pushing oh. this roll. Oh, pushing it? Oh, I was going to try and grab some other shiny sharp type of thing mm -hmm. and then like take the screwdriver or whatever sort of like ice pick any sort of sharp metal thing and okay into the lock do you want me to re-roll that uh nope that's fine uh <laughs> are you sure you don't want me to re-roll that <laughs> so what happens is you find this sharp uh almost like a lady's hairpin Mm -hmm. uh, and you jam it into the lock and you realize that it's made out of wood when mm. it snaps in your hand Ow. getting stuck in the lock uh, unless you wanted to spend seven of your luck points I'm spending seven <laughs> okay that is a good spend yes I'm spending seven so it snaps off in your hand and you're like, shit, I've broken the lock, uh, but the gods seem to uh, 
have your favor tonight. So you sort of wiggle it out and it opens. And, uh, and uh, what all the while- What is going on in there? Well, all the while as it opens, it's like, <laughs> it's all according to plan. You know, some of these locks are just, they're just, they're just trickier than others. And, you know, some, I hadn't run across this one before, but you know, I'm, I do what I can. I have my skill set. That's why I'm here. All right. So it opens. Uh, it is very dark in this basement. Does anyone have a light source? I got a flashlight. Yeah. Okay. I, I have my electric torch. <laughs> like one of the five things I wrote down. <laughs> flashlight. All right. So are all three of you going down? Hmm. Yeah, I'll go down. I, I mean, yeah, I'll go down. Flashlight. Alex, you want to stay up here and keep yeah, an eye I out? Yeah, might, I might stay up here and keep an eye out for it. Alex is looking a little nervous about going down. So I was like, yeah. Yeah, I don't even, here. I didn't even give myself a lighter or anything because that would have cost this thing called money. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Alex, you hang out upstairs. Uh, Agatha and Cliff descend into the dark shadow recesses of this pawn shop basement. It is extremely creepy. Uh, it's a good thing that neither of you are arachnophobic because there are co cobwebs aplenty down here. Uh, the air is musty. It's quite clearly been a while before since anyone has been in here. Uh, and as you swing your electric torch back and forth, you can see the beam fall on, you know, piles of discarded linens that have now become rat's nest, like literal rat's nest. Two little red eyes peeping right at you. Uh, and so, give me, the both of you please, uh, another spot hidden. This one is going to be hard. So you're going to need to succeed at a hard level. Nope. I mean, you could spend 15, no, not even 15. Jeez. Yeah, I yeah it'd be so 15 bad. to get a normal yeah. <laughs> regular success. <laughs> Such a, All right. so, so bad. It's so dark. It's so... That's why it's hard. Uh, mm -hmm. And so do either of you have any sort of background in architecture or construction? Uh, probably not. I'm just looking at no. my skills before I uh, say no, definitely. Yeah, no, but mm, no, I'm going to have to say no. All right. So what you can tell is that uh, this does not share any sort of basement with Choo Choo House. Okay. Well, shit. Yeah. Well, so I guess you, we can just. You keep have enough spatial house. awareness to be like, oh, okay, so Choo Choo House basement is on the other side of this wall right here. But there's no door or passage or anything. All right. Uh, well, I mean, if we do know what the wall is, what is the wall made out of? Can uh, I at least tell that? Yeah. Concrete yeah, brick. So as you sort of like put Specific. your hand up against the wall, uh, it is red brick. And it occurs to you that the other walls of this basement are concrete. Hmm. So this was put up. Yeah, I look around for any sort of like, like Agatha had mentioned, a crowbar, some sort of prying, like a pry bar, anything down here. Go ahead, give me a luck roll. Of course, you're gonna ask me to roll luck. <laughs> Literally, to make it interesting. Literally, the worst. God. Oh God. No. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, that's not a botch. Yeah, barely. Ooh. 
uh, there are some random tools here, like some some nails and some screws. Uh, there is no crowbar, unfortunately. There. I mean, I have a knife. I just didn't really want to use it for this. I mean, do you want to see if we can remove a couple of bricks, Agatha? Do you want to remove bricks from the wall? No, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm no architect, but she like moves the flashlight around, like starting to look at like the ceiling. Is that a smart idea? I mean, you could conceivably take a brick or two out of the wall uh, and it would not cause it to fall. I'm just curious why the rest mm -hmm. of the walls are concrete and this one's brick. Yeah, uh, that was sort of what the spot hidden was before, uh, but you asked the right questions to get the information anyway, uh, is that this wall was an addition after the building was constructed. So yeah, I'll take my knife out and just kind of start carefully so I don't break the knife, but mm -hmm. yeah, chipping away at the the mortar. <laughs> yeah, the mortar. Because I couldn't work. I couldn't think about that word. I couldn't remember. I will provide a right. uh, light so that it doesn't accidentally cut off his finger. Okay. So go ahead and Valid. give me. Uh, you can use either strength or dexterity, whichever one you have oh, better. I'm going to use strength. I succeed. Okay. Excellent. Uh, so, yeah, it, it takes about an hour, or, you know, not an hour, maybe half an hour to chip away enough at the mortar, enough that you can finally, like, slide one of the bricks out. Okay. How big are the bricks? Are we, like, huge, like, bricks or, like, bricks? They're just standard red bricks. Okay. What do you see? I don't know yet. I look, I kind of peep through the hole. Turn your light away though. I don't want bright light shining through this hole. Uh, flick it off real quick. Okay. Let me. All right. So what you see is a space that is currently unoccupied and so go ahead and give me another spot hidden check please nope i fumbled that one hard <laughs> okay uh so what happens is uh and you think it's unoccupied uh but someone steps in front of the brick hole uh, and you hear them start talking about uh, preparing the room. And so they ask, uh, you know, how many, how many days do we have? It seems like something is going to happen here uh, at night in a couple days. All right. If they, if whoever is speaking, like if they vacate the area, I will gently slide that brick back in. All right. And then go upstairs. All right. You have a week. Uh, so all of you will know that the next new moon will be on January 24th. All right.
That's when they say it's going to, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to go down. All right. And so upstairs, Alex. Yeah. What are you, <laughs> are you just pulling your heels? Are you yeah, it's just kind of like a, kind of initially doing the, I've, I've been on lookout for a few things here and there before. You know, I'm loud and can run fast and let people know if anything's happening. So, uh, yeah, so I'm just kind of rocking my heels back and forth at first, maybe leaning over, kind of looking in a cabinet, just, you know, kind of trying to keep myself so that if anyone were to kind of look through any of the glass, they wouldn't see too much movement happening in there. All right. Go ahead and give me a listen roll, please. All right. Let's see if any of these points I put here were worth it. That's a no, they never are. Mm. Uh, I might, you know what? That's a lot of points. How important is this listen rule? Should be very important, who knows? Could be. You right. never know. Yeah. I'm you a, spend the luck, you'll never know. I'll spend the luck, sure. Okay. To open I want a to seal. <laughs> yeah, I broke the seal, so who knows? I'm young and dumb, YOLO, right? Or whatever the 20s version of YOLO is, that's me. All right, so you're sort of walking and you're shuffling your feet uh, and you hear the your footsteps echo, but mm -hmm. then you realize it's not actually an echo and you look out the window and those, why knows the, mm -hmm. the people who have apparently nothing better to do than mm -hmm. just hang out in this shitty courtyard all day have sort of moved closer to the door of the pawn shop. Mm -hmm. and you can tell that they are definitely paying attention to what's going on inside. Hmm. They don't look hostile, not yet, but they do look attentive. Yet. Good. <laughs> uh, are there any, so you said a bunch of the stuff that's in here would be less than a dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, out of everything that would be near me, is there anything that would be like fanciful to be used as a heavy weapon or something to make a loud heavy bang if needed? Go ahead and give me another luck roll. A luck roll? Mm-hmm. You said you didn't say luck roll before. It was a listen roll before. Yeah, Either. but you're you're looking for an object mm. that you can use. And so this roll is checking if you're lucky enough for it to be there. Oh no, I'm not lucky. No, I am not lucky for it to be here. Well, I would have been at the start of today. <laughs> <laughs> I would have had the, that at the start of today. That's the trade-off for spending luck points. Okay. My time is coming. <laughs> All right. So would you like to have any conversation? Uh, like, do you actually want to poke your head out? Mm. Mia's mayor says this is a terrible idea. Uh, trying to think what my gut instinct is, is in anything like this would be. Like, because they don't look like undercover cops or anything. They don't have, they don't have that flavor to them they are absolutely not cops okay cool they're absolutely not cops if we're would i have any knowledge like of the city um as far as like turfs go given my own streetwise that would be like what i guess that's where i put my intelligence like the idea of why i had that there sure uh so uh yeah so you are in harlem uh, mm -hmm. which is, especially at this point, considered, uh, you know, where all the Black people live, that mm -hmm. is their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you would get um, both American-born people and also African immigrants would all come to settle in Harlem. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that uh, even though it is primarily Black people who live and work here, the Harlem Renaissance is in full swing. 
And so every night you've got uh, theaters, dance halls, music halls, performance venues, um, bookstores, uh, just producing all this incredible art. Uh, and it is good enough that, uh, you know, every night a lot of white people do come to Harlem uh, mm -hmm. to avail themselves of all of these um, you know, performance. Yeah, just to get to have the experience. Yeah, to live in the yeah. live in the moment for sure. Yeah. So you do stand out a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Alex kind of less so because uh, even though uh, you you are Greek, uh, you obviously don't have a whole lot of money. Yeah. All right. So uh, yeah. So I, I might poke my head out there just to kind of, or at least kind of. Um, just poke it out there and be like, hey, what are you doing? Hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, like that's just kind of her whole sort of deal. Like this, God, this is the problem for making a character who thinks she's much cooler than she actually is. Like she, she would sit there and go, hey, uh, can I help y'all? You looking for a lady? I don't know. Just hanging around, checking things out. What about you? People come looking here for stuff. You're knocking the place over. There ain't much inside. And yeah, seeing that, do you, was there anything good in here to start off with? Eh, not really. I had a bicycle once. Oh, you know how to ride it. What you, uh, what you doing this far into Harlem? We're, uh, we're looking, we're looking for some people. A friend, a uh, friend of ours got murdered. Just, uh, a couple of, couple of uh, tips led us this way. We're looking for a Mr. Silas. Do you know a Mr. Silas in these parts? Oh, sorry to hear that about your friend. Yeah. What was their name? Uh, uh it was uh he's also like an elias all these ass names right all right go ahead and give me a spot hidden check please god yeah hey. that's a hard success <laughs> okay. First one and likely only one of this entire game guys i <laughs> hope it was good <laughs> So you say Elias, and you see for a very brief moment in this guy's eyes, recognition. Mm -hmm. uh, and because this is a hard success, uh, this guy has been drinking something out of a paper bag uh, the whole time that he's been in the courtyard. He is not drunk. Mm -hmm. You know him? <laughs> nope. Don't lie to me. Sorry for your loss. Hey, but question. This Mr. Uh, Silas, though, you probably hang around these parts more than I do. He runs the shop next door. What do you know about him? What does he do? I don't know. Sells art. Sells art? Is he, like, a part of any, like, clubs or anything around here? Any place where he hangs out after he goes to the shop, after he closes the shop? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's this, there's this one speakeasy uh -huh. that gives you directions to a place uh, a couple blocks away. Oh, yeah. Nice. Well, thank you. And, uh, hey. So, uh, but is that where you get that? Where are you getting your, uh, your goods there? Points oh, to the bag. Um, yeah. Yeah, they, they sometimes sell it out of the, you know, the back room. Oh, yeah. Hey, good uh, luck, lady. Or no, good luck, kid. Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you. Yeah, and uh, thanks for telling me there's nothing here. I'm, we'll probably move on, but uh, I hope you have a nice day, okay? All right, you watch, you watch this person shuffle off uh, and into mm -hmm. one of the tenement houses that form part of the courtyard. Mm-hmm. 
would I be able to kind of see which house it like went up to? Obviously not which room or whatever the person went up to, but just kind of mark which building. Yeah, you, you can mark the building, certainly. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. And it was just the one dude. What about the other guy? Uh, you can tell that they are still watching you, but not doing or saying anything. Do I recognize any of them? Like they're just completely unfamiliar. Do you hang out in Harlem a lot? No. But no idea. Some of those guys have those faces. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so with that, uh, I would kind of like close the door a bit, maybe shove another little like brick or something by the door just so that I don't get surprised or have some sort of sound in case anyone else pulls anything. And I would, hey. call, I would call down into the basement. Hey, you guys. You guys, you all right down there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, listen, I think I might know where we find that Mr. Silas Quammy guy. Where? Where? There's a speakeasy. And right. I know a spot. I just talked with some of the, with one of the people out there. They're stalking us. I guess I what? should have started with that, shouldn't I? Okay, so uh, those drunk guys in the courtyard, they're not drunk. They've been watching us this whole time. All right, and I assume at this point- Yeah, I would have gone Agatha, upstairs. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, we, we are not having this conversation by shouting up and down stairs at each other. Yeah, they're watching us. We're being watched, it's fine. <laughs> and you talk to them? Yeah, they were standing outside the door. I wasn't about to get jumped. What'd they say? Well, they were like wondering what we were doing, asking if we were once over in the place, saying that the only nice thing in here at one point was a bicycle. Then, uh, then I like asked him what he knew about Mr. Silas. And they said he runs the shop there. And I was like, where can we find him? And he's like, what are we doing in Harlem? Which that's a fair question. So uh, I said we were looking for some info on a friend of ours who died. Did you give him the real name? I said Mr. There's lots of people <laughs> named Mr. Something around here. I thought I was being clever. Mm -hmm. Well, you got the speak. You got a location. We might be able to find this guy. That's good. Yeah, I didn't say the full name. I'm not an idiot. All right. I don't know. I don't know how reliable a speakeasy location is from Wino. Actually, that is very reliable. That's Never very mind. reliable. <laughs> he said that it came from the thing, although I don't know that's what he was drinking. I didn't didn't smell as strong as the usual juice that comes around these parts. Mm. Normally, you can smell it off of them, right? Like, you know. Well, what do we want to do? Do we check out the speakeasy or do we want to time is it now i look at my watch my pocket watch it is we will advance the time an hour it is 6 p.m too early for a speakeasy yeah mm. not necessarily. i mean not for the wino i mean true Listen, I've run a couple of favors for people here and there. Like, you know, that someone wants a bag boy to go and pick up something for him. Like, I could go in to see what I could do for that. Go we'll try that. I like being helpful. All right, off to the speakeasy. What do you think, Agatha? She thinks back to all the things that have happened so far, realizing that she has not yet had a drink. Yes. This is a good idea. All right, then. All right. So you walk according to the directions given to you by the wino. Uh, and you start to notice that as you walk down this street and make this turn, the crowds of people, so there's people walking up and down 137, 138. They thin out. And then you are in this 
blind alley. Look, I think as we're doing this, before we get there, I'm like, I think we've been given some bum directions here. Yeah, this isn't looking good. <laughs> uh, so standing at the entrance to the alley, you can see a door on the far end. Maybe not. You know what, guys? I've come this far. Why don't y'all hang here? I'll go over there. And then if they uh, they try something, it's just me. And you'll hear me scream, don't worry, I'm real loud. We got this. And I got, don't worry, I got some stuff. And she's got, she taps her uh, person. She's got in there like a little set of brass knuckles, a knife and a, a wire in case she's got like, I'll be all right. In case you need to, to go root them. Okay. <laughs> a piano string. I guess All you could right. say I'm a piano player. So you walk alone into the alley. Mm-hmm. All right. And so you are now standing in front of this green door. I'll keep an eye on Alex. Agatha, can you keep an eye out <laughs> on the yeah. street? Thanks. Uh are there is there like a slot or anything on the door? Nope. Solid green door. Can I lean up and listen to the door real quick? Yeah, go ahead and give me a listen check. Oh, thank God. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. Nice. And then they tell the exa- exact plan. When they get there, we're going to jump. Them. And then we run. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, by your success, you hear well enough to not hear any sort of music or conversation or anything that you would expect from a speakeasy. Uh, you also hear some shuffling about, like... There are people in the room moving. Uh, And then um, you do hear some whispering. Uh, Like, hush, they're almost here. I just ran three blocks, so shut the fuck up. Hmm. Is that about all I hear? <laughs> Just yes. All right. So uh, Alex has a moment. She just kind of sighs. She'll shove her hands back into the pockets of her jacket, kind of kicking rocks back down the alley. Just it ain't a speakeasy, guys. No. No. We 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 were in fact given bum directions. I wonder why. I don't know. Seems like it's such a nice wino. What did they say again? Uh, they said, uh, I would repeat what I had just heard. <laughs> he just ran three blocks to get here. So he came to let him know that we were coming. I wonder why they want us. Well, I would be concerned that they might be with the people who killed Mr. Elias in the first place. That might be my concern. Kill him, kill his friends, something like that. Well, if that's the case, then we shouldn't keep them waiting, should we? We could just go back to the hotel. Are we wanting to die today, Miss Agatha? <laughs> I never want to die. Then I don't think we need to go in that door. I mean, you can go up and listen I to mean, the door if they, you they, like. They may know something about what happened. Oh, he definitely knew who Mr. Elias was. 
he had a look. He was pretending like he didn't know, but he had a look. Oh. Well, that just puts everything into perspective now, doesn't it? Yeah. It don't sound like a party in there. I don't think you're getting any juice over there, Miss Agatha. I'm sure we can find you some in town, though. If they recognize the name and then sent us to a bogus location, what is their motive? Uh, perhaps murder? I would agree with that. Well, this think of well, come to think of it, there have been a lot of guys around who have been listening for that name now that I think about it. Uh, when we went to the hotel before we were gonna go and meet with Mr. Elias the first time, when uh myself and Colin would were casing the joint, uh these other guys they were listening and they perked up as well when they heard his name. So it's a lot of people who were listening for him, and that was before he died. Seems so like they know. More- Sorry. Yeah. You go first, Mr. Reynolds. Seems like this is all connected, that they know something about what happened. Do but do we want to take care of it? Do we want to find out now or go back to the hotel and involve our lieutenant friend mm. or detective friend? You know, that might not be a bad idea. What if right quick we tried to contact, like using one of those telephones to contact the lieutenant and we say it's a speakeasy and it's not. And then (laughs) they get busted by the cops doing whatever sort of shady junk they were going to be doing in the first place. Is there a police box nearby? Uh, Sorry, there are no police boxes nearby. We yell Uh, help murder. Is a policeman going to come by? So there is a precinct house in the area. So it is a couple blocks that way, uh, back to where all the people are. Um, but give me, give me idea rolls, please, everybody. Thank Those you. Those are just intelligence. Mm-hmm. Ideas. Please let me have two brain cells to rub together today. I have no idea. Of all the, this is one of the <laughs> best stats that I have. Uh, I'm going to spend. Ed- I'm going to spend two luck to make that a success. Please. Okay. I don't know why I rolled it again, but. Uh yeah. So Cliff, uh, you remember? Uh oh yeah, there is a precinct house for Harlem. It is over there. Um. But uh, that is where you have heard rumors of cops being, uh, you know, more corrupt than is normal. So uh, because Corey cannot uh, be present today, I will sort of give you what tied into their backstory in that they had that conversation with Lieutenant Poole Mm -hmm. about this. There are very similar murders. Uh, to Jackson Elias, we already caught and convicted the guy. Poole didn't think the guy was guilty, and this sort of proves it. Mm -hmm. Uh, But the cop who was in charge of the case, who is in charge of the Harlem Precinct House, absolutely insists they caught the right guy. Gotcha. Mm. All right. So are we busted in, or are we heading back to the hotel? I think that's where we're at here. Well, if these are the guys who potentially did the other murders, we might end up with a little doohickey on our forehead. Yes, Just another are, adventure. We are a couple uh, of men down. I guess it's better safe than sorry tonight. Yeah. Okay. Flip a coin. <laughs> I think it's back to the hotel. Back to the hotel. But now we know okay. where this is. We do know where it is. 
You do. Okay. All right. Don't mind me. I'm closing out the combat tracker because we don't <laughs> need it. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, anyway. Not yet. There's plenty of time to mess things up. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, you return to your hotel. Uh, it is, let's call it 7.30. So, you know, it's not too late in the evening. Uh, Agatha, you could seek out uh, one of the speakeasies that you are personally familiar with if you'd like. I most certainly will. All right. Um, Do you want company? Of course. Excellent. Uh, at this Alex? point, yeah, might as well. Yeah. Dust off her hat for a second. <laughs> I'm ready. All right. So, yeah, Agatha, you know where there is a, a, an apartment building where essentially some of the apartments have been uh, converted. So, you know, drinking in that apartment, gambling in that apartment, other salacious activities in that apartment. Um, you know, the, the booze won't make you go blind and the music is decent most of the time. I will simply go for a drink. I will not not be uh, not be gambling or having anything to do with that room. All right, go ahead uh, and give me spot hiddens, everybody. Oh! Oh! I made it. Nice. I will. Okay. Oh, you already got an extreme. Okay, I'm yeah. not gonna. I'm not gonna spend my luck. Uh, hold on to your luck because my luck will run out quick. Don't worry. Hang on to yours. I got a hard uh, success. So, all right. So you all spot from varying differences. Alex, you spot this person first because this is the person that you were just talking to in the courtyard. You are being followed. Mm -hmm. I would let the others know. Yeah, and once Alex points it out, the rest of you see them as well. Same thing. Uh, they look observant, but not hostile. Although, uh, Alex and Agatha, with your extreme and hard successes, uh, you know, just the way he stands, the way his hands kind of sag on his hips, there is something heavy in one of his trouser pockets, probably a weapon. Mm hmm. <sighs> is there a music playing? Uh, yes. Is it music you could dance to? Yes. And so, uh, just to clarify, uh, you are in the apartment and glancing out of the window. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Oh, I thought we were in the... They were all in the room with us. Sorry. Yeah, so I... I, yeah. Like... Too. I thought we were, like, inside of a place, and yeah. Hmm. Well, since we're being followed, perhaps we should uh, set our own trap. Sure. What do you have in mind? What floor are we on? Or are you on? The third floor. Well, if they did follow us here, I assume they think that we're going here where we are. We could wait mm -hmm. in the stairwell one level down and wait for them to come up. Once they do, 
we will spring some type of elaborate trap that I have not yet thought of. Nice. You're so smart, Miss Agatha. But she opens her purse, <laughs> pulls out her little her little revolver. I do have this. Oh. I got this. She pulls out her knife and looks to Mr. Reynolds. What have you got? I open my jacket and show just my two forty fives. Oh, all right. So alternatively, because they are only watching one side of the building, you could try to sneak away. Where's the, where's the fun in that? Me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just wanted to present it as an option so you knew it was there. Is there a flower <laughs> pot on the windowsill? Oh my god, you have throw. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Yes. A very beautiful. nice window box <laughs> full of geraniums. Nice. Should I gain their attention? Sure. Why not? He knows I know his face, at least. I really would like to know why they are following us at this point. Well, uh, again, it's probably because I said one name, and apparently everybody knows that name. And it's, there's yeah. a there's a million people in New York City, but apparently, but we know around that, one place. <laughs> yeah, we know that. Oh, Elias was looking into Mister Nakwame. Or at least he had that business card. Mm -hmm. So we don't really know if they were at odds or not. We're just assuming that they were. But why are they following us? Because well, we were curious. Because we knew him. Uh, allegedly. Yeah. And we're in this part of the neighborhood. Well, if you'd like to get their attention, his attention. I guess it picks up the pot, looks at it. Well, we're not going dancing tonight, so I got to run off some energy somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and I will chuck the potted plant out of the window. Uh, towards the nearest head. All right. Uh, so go ahead and give me a throw roll. And uh, you oh. hear. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. No. Oh, my God. Okay. 50 of your luck. Yeah, that's 50 a... <laughs> of your 55 luck to make it a regular success. <laughs> oh. So. Uh, uh... You pick up the pot and you huck it uh, and you hear like, hey, that's my wife's flower pot. What you doing? Uh, and the pot shatters oh. at the feet of the person that you were aiming at. You have his attention now. Uh, I'll yell down. Hey, looking for me, you you cad and then i'll move away from the wind. uh all right those that'll egg him on yeah you see him look up doesn't respond but starts slinking off down the street i guess they don't want to talk then i'm not sure it's safe for us to go back to the hotel right then Right now, though, because if they're going to follow us, they're going to well, try and follow us there. If they're going to follow us, they're going to follow us regardless of where we go. We didn't notice that we were being followed till we got here. So, I mean, now that we know that we're being followed, we can keep an eye out. But I plan on sleeping in my bed in the hotel bed tonight. It's it is nice paid bed. for. Man. It's an actual bed. Right. 
with a bathtub with water and soap. <laughs> That's always nice. <coughs> so I guess we're gonna have to like probably tree laundry our service stiff steps and go forward and backwards to get to where we need to go. We can do a bit of zigging and zagging, I suppose. All right, then back we go. I will finish two drinks before we decide to go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I do have a drink. So here. are you going to try and get confrontational or are you just going to try and sneak away? I might want to try to have a conversation, but out in a place where it's a little more open. Not. I don't, I don't think she said conversational. I think she said I'm, confrontational. I hear. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I hear. I'm just saying what my character would try to do. I think. I put points in plan, fast talk. It's not working, but I have points in fast talk. My plan is to basically, you know, would recommend is we take a circuitous route back to the hotel and keep an eye out to see if we're being followed. Mm -hmm. I mean, more than likely, they already know we stay at that hotel at this yeah. point. So probably. And if they are following us, then maybe we can duck into an alleyway or something and see if we can find out why these people are tailing us. Uh, Cliff, go ahead and give me an idea roll. Okay. Uh, hey, I succeeded. All right. You only started noticing these people following you after you went by Juju House on the pawn shop. Uh, so it is a reasonable assumption that they have only just now been made aware of your existence. Okay. So as long as you can avoid leading them back to the hotel, that will remain a safe place for you. All right. So Alex, can you keep an eye out for them? I sure can. All right. So I think we just head back to the hotel all right so here is what i would like i would like a disguise roll from one of you a spot hidden roll from one of you and a stealth roll from one of you so each three of you makes one roll you get to decide who does what does anybody actually have disguise i yeah. have five same yeah. all right uh, <laughs> I had been shuffling around some of my stuff at one point. That's uh, where it got the cut. <laughs> I have. I I am not great at spot hidden, but I have succeeded. Well, uh, yeah. I am not very good at stealth, so I can just make the disguise and hope for the best. You also I have a lot of luck to spend. I do. Yeah. All right. I'll take the spot hidden. I guess. And I'll take the stealth. All right, so here's the spot hidden. And that's a big fail. Okay. Wait. It's uh, not even telling me I can spend luck because I don't have enough. Oh, no. <laughs> we stealthy, friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We stealthy. Hard, hard my success. Voice. I'm hitting puberty, my voice. Oh my god, it's happening finally. Okay, here comes the disguise. Yeah, not even close. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not even close enough to spend luck. All right. So, uh what happens is uh So, Agatha, you try and like rearrange people's like uh their hair and their clothes but you forget to take your fascinator off and Alex still has her newsboy cap on. Uh, so, and as far as you know, you are not followed to the hotel, but uh, Alex knows a couple back entryways where you're pretty sure if you were followed, you would have seen them. All right. And I think right now is a good time 
to call our mid-show break. All right. Uh, and uh, when we return, ready. we should be reunited with Dicky, and you can tell him Yay. all of the oh. fun adventures. Excitement. All right. We will see everybody in 10 minutes. All right.
And we are back and we have Key who has rejoined us after a coffee and keyboard incident. Yeah. Uh, hooray. Um, so, Why'd you have to tell people that? Oh, I'm sorry <sighs> to blow your cover. All the things. Ah. All right. So uh, what happens is, Dickie, we can uh, just sort of assume that you were chilling out at the hotel? Sure, yeah. Okay, because the last you knew, these people all went off like, all right, well, we're going to go get uh, clothes for the funeral tomorrow. And you're like, I have my suit already, so have fun, kids. Oh, have fun. You kids have fun. I'm going to go to the speakeasy. <laughs> And he never did. <laughs> I mean, you could have if you want to. You know, yeah, I'm halfway to the speakeasy because old man likes. All right. Uh, yeah, so you are walking towards the speakeasy when you see Alex, like, slink around a corner like look both ways and then you both lock eyes with each other uh, hey mr schwamm <laughs> what's going on over here uh so uh long story but uh we're being followed so we're losing the tail so we're heading back to the hotel you want me to help walk you back sir go back to the hotel why are yeah. you being followed well we lost them hopefully so far. Why, you youngsters? No idea how to lose a tail. At least it gives me business. At least it used to. Well, hopefully then we'll keep you on this nice long vacation for a while. Come, come, come. And I guess All I would wave right. the others back around with us. We don't want to go to that one. Trust me. So I guess I wave at Agatha and Cliff. Yep. We'll go back to the hotel. Sneak, sneak, sneak. Sneak, sneak, sneak. Sneak, sneak, sneak. I, I have already made you roll, so you do not have to roll again. Uh, Dickie can piggyback onto your roll. Uh, you make it, all of you, back to the hotel room. As far as you know and can tell, Followed by nobody. Nice. All right. So then I suppose while we're there, we can give the lowdown to Mr. to Mr. Schwamm. Yeah, go go ahead, have that scene. Uh, so been a busy day for us. We got new clothes. That's nice. Uh, then it got a little uh, interesting. Wouldn't you say so, Mr. Reynolds? Interesting, yes. Yeah. It's a good word. Yeah. I feel so, it kind of takes away from everything that happened. What are you going to leave me in suspense? Hmm. What, what, uh, what happened? You know that juju place that we were that that uh, Miss Agatha had found out about. Yeah, I heard of it. Yeah. Uh, well, we went to go and check it out. We kind of, sort of broke into a pawn shop next door that was abandoned. And uh, we kind of, sort of, uh, I'd say we, they didn't do it. It was me. Kind of, sort of, mentioned Mr. Elias's name. And the person knew, and so they've been following us for a little bit. Even to a speakeasy. Miss Agatha tried to throw a plant at them. It was very impressive. I didn't hit them, though. We got very close. Very and then close. there's that bit about something happening at the juju shop at the next new moon. Seemed suspicious. Oh. Would they have told Agatha, or not Agatha, would they have told Alex about that along the way? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, probably. Yeah. Hey. All 
don't know. So, uh, oh yeah. And then they tried to corner us and they were going to, I guess, murder us in this place with a green door. Uh, but we didn't go in there because they would have murdered us. So we're here. Yeah, you're here. Uh-huh. Followed by a murderer. Well, we don't know if they were murderers. We just suspect they might have been murderers. But and we weren't followed. Alex, ass- Alex assured us that we, weren't, we followed. weren't followed. We had a clean getaway. Uh, I know these streets. So how was your day, Mr. Schwann? Well, I was going to get a drink, but that didn't exactly pan out. What's the time at this point by the time we got back? What is the time? Hold, please, bringing Hmm. up the calendar. Uh, So 7.30 by the time you get back to the hotel. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, no, that was when you got back to the hotel and then you decided to do the speakeasy, so... uh, A little bit later than that. Yeah, Mm. so let's put it at 9.30. I think two hours is enough. Mm -hmm. Mr. Shoreham, if you want to go... I'm sure we can get a car. Okay. I don't need I don't need one of those. I can walk there. And Dickie grabs his cane and begins walking very slowly across the room to the door. <laughs> Hand trembling as he grabs the door handle and turns it and opens it with a <laughs> swings it open and walks out to do the speakeasy. Want, do you want company? <laughs> I come if you'd going? like. I'd be better to have company if you if you really were followed, you know. Yeah. That's not to be alone. I would look at Cliff and Agatha. Agatha does not want to go back there. Well, isn't there another speakeasy? And just you walk up to a basement, you whisper at the door. I don't know. I don't frequent those types of places. You need cash for something like that. I ain't got the kale. What what speakeasy are you planning on going to, Mr. Schwarm? And it's at that moment Dickie stops halfway down the stairs. He realizes he didn't quite know the name or really the exact location. He starts going back up the stairs. I don't remember exactly. Well, you know a good one. I did. You know a bad one. (laughs) Kids. All right. My speakeasies. Go ahead and give me an idea roll, please, Dickie. That's a failure. Oh, right. So the only speakeasy that you know of is the one that Agatha and Cliff and Alex have just come from. You do know that you could find like a 24-hour drugstore and ask a couple subtle questions. Uh, That might not get you the location of a speakeasy, but you can probably get a bottle of something. Yeah. Well, I'm going to stop by the pharmacy, I guess. I can at least join you there, if you wish. Go right ahead. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go with Alex and Mr. Schwarm. Well, I don't want to be left alone. We're well, not. Guess... You're in the hotel with all these people. I don't know any of them. I That's barely true. know you guys. Also true. This is true. Safety in numbers. 
Very true. All right. So, so yeah, you later. walk a couple of blocks, you find a 24 hour pharmacy, electric lights blazing on. Wow. It's a young kid behind the desk. How young? Hey. Really, really young? Uh, you know, like 16, 17. You know, this is their first job type of age. Mr. Schwarm goes up to the counter. Uh, can I help you, sir? Yeah, I need something for my headache. Oh, well, we have uh, the aspirin uh, over there. Uh, let me help you. No, no, no. I need, <clears throat> I need something a little stronger than that. Uh, so go ahead and give me a fast talk roll. And what is your credit rating? 65. Oh, right. That's a failure for fast talk. Oh, no. All right. So uh, let me roll something myself. OK, that was a success on, on my part. So uh, he brings out uh, a bottle uh, labeled morphine. Is this what you're Why does for, this sir? keep happening? This is the <laughs> third game where it comes up. Why? <laughs> Always. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Richard's eyes bug out just a, for a second and then he clears his throat. <clears throat> yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. All right. Uh, would anyone else like to fast talk? I'll try. Okay. Uh, Yeah. All right. Uh, so you manage to be like, yeah, but are are we looking for like a uh, like a tonic of some kind? And you say tonic, I'm like oh, oh, yeah. Uh, goes into the back, comes out with uh, it is wrapped in brown paper, but quite clearly bottle shaped. Yes, this I believe is what he is looking for. All right, uh, cool. So, uh, yeah, you walk away with uh, a couple doses of morphine and a bottle of middling quality rye. Hey, good for later. Better than the stuff that I've made in a bathtub. Apparently a very cuddly pharmacist. <laughs> huh? If you want to cuddle. Cuddly, eh? Alrighty. Well, Mr. Schwarm, you got your medicine. Yeah, came for you. Your parcel. Mm. Do you like to go sit on a park bench for healing yourself? Uh, we can do that at the hotel. And Dickie's already begun walking, but he's only gotten like maybe a couple feet away from the rest of the party. So it just looks like he's just meandering about. All right. You shuffle your way back to the hotel. Uh, I assume a a round all around. Uh, go ahead and note down the things that you have. Oh, what? Oh, them. 
Protocol. Yeah, yeah. Oh. That uh, Dicky has a bottle of morphine might come in handy at some point. Who knows? Need a syringe and just. Can you just drink it? No. Yes, we'll find out. <laughs> uh, oh well. One Theoretically, yes, but this is not laudanum. Okay, that's what, I, maybe that was what <laughs> my brain was thinking of was actually laudanum with it, but yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if you really want to get shit faced in the 20s, mix some absinthe and some laudanum. Just drink formaldehyde. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're going to cap out your evening with uh, drinking. Drinking and recalling everything that had happened throughout the day, just in case we had missed anything between. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you even catch what they looked like, the, the people following you? Oh, yeah, that's how we saw. Uh... That's how we saw them uh, when we went to the speakeasy. We had seen them at the pawn shop or outside there, outside the juju shop. And then, uh, yeah. So, and I would describe the people to the group. Okay. So yeah, just about so tall, about so heavy, hair, mustache, like so. Mm -hmm. One of them had a crooked nose. Yeah. That type of thing. Yeah, yeah I would go as in-depth as I could. All right. So, unless there's anything that anyone else would like to do. And so, uh, just to check, Keith, seemed like you were keeping an eye on the stream. When you weren't around? Oh, no. I have no idea what happened. Oh, oh right. all right. Oh, no. <laughs> I was probably... focused on cleaning up. All right. Then they should probably tell you in character. Yeah, Mr. Swarm. So yeah, we already told him about going to the Jute. We, we got our clothes for tomorrow's engagement. Funeral. Yes. Uh, after that, we swung by the Juju house, to see if we could speak with the name that was on the card, Silas, uh, what was his name? Silas Nagwami. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Uh, but they were closed. They don't open until tomorrow, 9 a.m. So we're probably going to head there tomorrow if you want to join us. Before the funeral, of course. As long as I don't miss that funeral. You won't. We'll be there. Yeah, we already told him about the... Uh, something going down during the next full moon. Full moon or new moon? New moon. Or new moon. New moon, sorry. New moon. That's that's January twenty fourth, by the way. I'll mark my calendar. Uh, we already told him about the winos. The winos about the throwing of the flower pot. Flower pot, speakeasy. Uh, the green door where they were going to try to murder us, but then we did not get murdered. And then we found him here. Yeah. All in all, a slightly exciting evening. Yeah, and so if you open the calendar on the far right, uh, upper right. Calend? Yeah, upper uh, right. Oh. 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 Yeah. Oh, look at that. There's red dots. This program is so cool. How do we touch it? Uh, double click. Oh. 
I like how there's no other holiday except for New Year's and Christmas. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, and I can view the entry. Aha. Aha. <laughs> So wait, hold on. Are we able to add entries on there? Is it just? Uh, I don't know. Uh, go ahead and do a double click and, and uh, see if it lets yeah. you. It's Is there any sort of? Me. There's okay. one that says at the bottom, and it said when I clicked the 16th because I was just going to log what we did today. Mm -hmm. Oh wait. Oh yeah, you can add if there's not one already there. All right. So I've got it. So it says view log entry. Oh, no. Now we're just screwing up our calendar. Yeah. No, that's fine. The keeper notes are separate from the player notes. Oh. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I can see that you can't. Uh -huh. Oh. Cool. Okay, cool. All right. So that's nifty. So we're able to see then. Like then we could make a mark of like when we first started seeing the people in Harlem and was, did we say that, um, was it said that the character, uh, that the, uh, the, the detective kind of told us about, did the detective tell us about any of the Harlem murders that were similar, or is that something that we had discovered along the way? I'm just trying to remember what, um, mm -hmm. I don't think he told us about it, but Colin uh recalled yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we're trying do... to see what we collectively know versus what we heard as players if he if he did say anything he did mention oh, what i'm looking for uh he did mention another name for a minute um, uh Mordecai lemon oh He was the one that suggested that the murders were associated with the African death cult. Oh. Okay. So the next day, what day is, so what time is the funeral for Mr. Elias? Again, I know that we've said it aloud, but. 2 p.m. Yep, 2 p.m. And what time was it that the Juju house opened again? It was like 10 a.m. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Okay. Closed on Sundays. Closed on Sundays, but open on a Saturday. All hmm. right. So uh, we will advance the calendar to nine in the morning. Look at that. It's moving right before my eyes. Uh -huh. Wow. Then I can click the chat box to Ooh. port the date into a uh, chat. Yeah. Ooh, wow. This program is so nice. Uh, all right. So it is 9 a.m. Are all four of you going? To the funeral? Isn't that what we were wearing the clothes for? Uh, well, so you wanted to go back to Choo Choo House in the morning, correct? Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. All right. What sort of prep work are you doing? I would probably spend some time talking with Mr. Reynolds about what he knows about Africa or whoever knows anything about Africa, the smart people. Yeah. Who has been there? <laughs> who has been there? Who, has, who, who can read a book? Because I know that's not me. I mean... I've been there. There's a chance that maybe Richard knows something about Africa. Uh, sure. Possibly. I don't know. Perhaps. Uh, go ahead. Um, whatever sort of knowledge skills you have, mm -hmm. uh, you can pick whichever one you like uh, and roll that for me. Bit of history. Yeah, okay. same. 
Nope. Got nothing. Succeed. All right. Uh, so you would get the very basic broad strokes of what has been going on in colonial Africa at the moment. And uh, essentially, the Europeans have come in, upended uh, quite a lot of uh, traditional structures mm -hmm. and just, you know, destroyed local governments, drawn borders where they shouldn't be drawn, and essentially just sort of created a lot of chaos for the people already living there. Uh, and this chaos uh, provides cover for all sorts of uh, abuses, exploitation, uh, yeah, and so it has caused a couple waves of immigration of people leaving Africa, coming here, looking for a better life, mm -hmm. uh, essentially. Yeah, so, so is Alex, there... Yes. Alex would just have listened to the basic history lesson for the first time ever. Yeah, so is there any information in specific that you're looking for? Uh... If there's, I guess, you know, just because she's a very devout Christian person, there's like death gods. They have like, are the gods and stuff there? Yes. You know, she would know about like the Greek gods and different stuff, but, you know, from having had that background, but she's very like devoutly Christian. Yeah. So you probably would be aware of various polytheism and missionary. Such, yeah. So various missionary oh. efforts. We're going to, you know, get a whole bunch of missionaries and send them to Africa to convert the people living there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so then I guess, yeah, but here also hearing about like these cults. So like the the, the juju people, uh, if, uh, if Mr. Elias was looking for the juju people and he was talking about uh, what kind of things was it that he was looking for, Miss Agatha? So I will bust out his notes that he took while in Nairobi. Which is uh, number 21 for anyone who wants to look at it. Let's see, uh, in his first set of notes, He talks about speaking with officials. Trying to uh, find out about the massacre. And the second set of notes, he talks specifically, and it is actually underlined. Uh, about his trip to the massacre site itself and how the region, the tribes of the region avoid the place saying that it is cursed by the god of the black winds whose home is the mountaintop. Could I do any research on the god of the black winds? Uh, Same. Is that what you would like to spend your morning doing? Yes. Okay, so uh, to clarify, uh, you can either go to the New York City Public Library or to Juju House. Ooh. Might be a good idea to go to... Mm. Do we want to kind of go in knowing a little something about it before we go in the place? <laughs> well, like, hey, tell me about the God of the Black Yeah, I think it makes more sense to do some research. Yeah. They spent a couple hours doing it. We could try to go to the, the shop closed at what time? Again, five. Five. Yeah. five. But we got to make it to the, can't spend too much time because we, we have to be at the funeral time. at two. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not lugging my dress around all day. <laughs> so we're going to have to come back here and change. I'll put it in the car. That's what I'm doing. All right. 
So there are a couple places that you could go. Uh, you could go to the public library. You could go back to Prospero House since they were uh, clearly um, publishers of occult weird topics. Uh, you could reach out to some of the other people uh, that you've been made aware of. So like Professor Cowles. Um, mm. Yeah, you could try calling up Miriam at right again. Actually, Professor Cowles may be a good. Good person to tap on this matter. Yeah, because wasn't that the whole point of that speech? The talk was about death cults and death gods and stuff. Yeah. And especially if the whole thing, if we're supposed to be looking for these people on an exposition and they're dead in Africa, kind of kind of connects. I may not be a smart person, but that kind of goes a little bit together to me. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna call up yeah, Professor Cowles and uh at least two things specific uh, off the top of my head. God of the Black Winds and the Bloody Tongue. All right. Uh, so you find the phone number for Arkham University pretty easily. Uh, you call, you make contact with the operator uh, who can uh, put you through to Professor Cowles. Uh, Am I speaking so, with a one, Mr. Cowles? Yeah, and so he speaks with an Australian accent, which I will not try to replicate because I can't. <laughs> uh, it says, Professor Cowles, how can I help you? Ah, uh, yes, my name is Agatha Merriweather. I am a fellow dabbler in a in the strange and wonderful, and I was uh, hoping to get. Uh, pick your brain on a couple of matters that you could uh, assist me with. Oh, I'm a bit busy, but uh, I, I could spare a little bit of time. How, how can I help? A friend of mine uh, was doing some investigating in Africa, and he had mentioned a couple of uh, names and entities that I was uh, I am not familiar with. I was hoping if you could give me your insight. Uh, one of them uh -huh. was the... Uh, God of the Black Winds. Oh. Uh, I don't know why everybody thinks I, I'm suddenly a, an expert at cults in Africa. My, my specialty is Australian cults, particularly the sand bat. But did you not give an expose on African cults recently? Oh, no, 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 no. I was, I was speaking about the Australian death cult of the sand bat. Uh, it's it's a very uh, ancient uh, Aboriginal cult. Um, it has some disturbing uh, parallels between uh, some cults uh, centered around the Pacific. I guess it starts like sifting through all of the papers that we have gathered. Like, wait a second, <laughs> hold up. <laughs> Did I read that wrong? I know that I didn't, but I want to have it so that I can actually read it. Mm -hmm. uh, it is one of the Nyarlathotep papers uh, after 10. I forget the number specifically. Uh, that one. Nope. 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 Seventeen. You know, strangely enough, I don't have 17 on my list. <laughs> it did say in Polynesian Southwest Pacific, uh, University of Sydney, Australia. Have other people been asking him about that, though? So others have been, yeah, so I'll, I'll get on the back on as I'm like talking to everybody else. Like, what I think? So uh, I have this flyer. 
Mm -hmm. And I, I guess there is some misunderstanding. What what does the flyer actually say? I can't look it up. I don't have 17 on my list. Oh, well, let me share it with you. I have 10 through 22, except for 17. <laughs> Oh, it says it's shared. Uh, but yeah, it says tonight only the cult of darkness in Polynesia and the Southwest Pacific, a two hour lecture with slides delivered by Professor Anthony Cowles, PhD of the University of Sydney, Australia, and presently Loxley Fellow of Polynesian es Esoterica at Miskatonic University, Arkham. Schuyler Hall, New York University, 8 p.m. tonight only. Well, I did read that wrong. Um, <laughs> for some reason, I thought it said specifically African cults. Uh, sorry to bother you. Click. <laughs> what happened? He doesn't know anything about Africa. He only knows about stuff in Australia. You're gonna need to tap into the resource. Well, Apparently, I, we, I can't read. We can do the research at the library. <laughs> oh, great. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So. Yeah. Betty, my car. Oh my God, Betty. 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 <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Well, so we're uh, so getting, who's getting in the car. <laughs> we're getting in the car. What's going to happen? Yeah. Car bomb. Yep, that's what I was thinking. Getting in the car gets hit by a train. <laughs> it gets hit by a train. <laughs> yeah, so let's go to the library for. A little bit. Okay. A nice right. relaxing calm day at the library. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah, what? There could be no bad tentacles here in the library. Like all these all right. nice crisp books. So. These flammable books. You arrive at the New York City Public Library. It is very beautiful, sprawling, lots of neoclassical architecture. Uh, multiple floors depend divided up, excuse me, by subject. Where would you like to go? Well, if it's uh -huh. divided up by subject, probably uh, so probably a folklore and a cult, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Can I roll library use to? Yes, yeah. you can. Uh, I, say I, that have, I actually do have library use. I have library use. Oh my I god. Why? <laughs> oh, your dice are trying to kill all of you. I know. Gosh. Oh, I'm gonna try uh, it. Like, I will I will. This is just a fake well. roll. Yeah, see that now. Yeah, when it oh doesn't my god. matter. I could spend six points and then Alex could actually use a library. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make that. I made it. Yeah, neither did I. Sheesh. All right. So what's going on is that the Dewey Decimal System has not yet become standard use in libraries. And so even though you are used to different libraries and you know where everything is, uh, you're sort of at loose ends when it comes here. But uh, Dickie just goes to a librarian and asks for help. So, what a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> so are we looking for anything in particular? Or just uh, generally African cults? Start specific then go 
Less yeah, if, if we can find if we can find specifics about this god of the black winds and the cult of the bloody tongue. Okay. So how how do you phrase that, Dicky? <laughs> you got any bloody tongues? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, excuse me. We're looking for information about the occult. Uh, more specifically, uh, anything about uh, the cult of uh, bloody tongues? I'm looking for it for my uh, my grandson. He's really into this sort of information. Uh, and so you uh, you look at the library and he's like, oh, I I'm sorry, repeat that, please. Uh, my grandson said the cult of the bloody tongues, I think. Oh, yes. Uh, Is we that a problem? Keep... No, no. Uh, everything's fine. We keep those books downstairs. Come with me. Of course you do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you mind if I bring uh, these people with me? Uh, it's, no, no. That, that, uh, but by all means, right. certainly. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and, and so she Dickie starts very slowly follows after the librarian <laughs> okay how about the rest of you yeah i'll follow dicky yes um now Dwayne probably knows what's going on because we're going into a, a dark basement after someone did some bullshittery mm -hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. mm -hmm. but is is this lady acting at all weird i will give Psychoanalysis rolls to anybody who wants to make one. Um, I think I have like a one in that. So I sure. have a one in that as well. I have a one and just, you know, why not? Yeah, why the heck not? Psychoanalysis I mean, or could psychology be? I came so close psychology. and I'm going to spend the three points. Oh my psychology. God. <laughs> uh, psychology would also work. Oh. oh, I have a better score. In that I have one. a better score. However, <laughs> three luck points I will spend, sir. I just want to see what I would have rolled. I did not mean to roll luck. Oh, I would have been so <laughs> close. Oh, That's man. I mean, I All meant right. to take away my luck. So, Agatha, you pick up. Uh, she is not dressed like the other librarians here. Ah. She she is dressed like very professionally, but there's just something a little bit off about what she's wearing. Like she's wearing combat boots instead of like pumps. I mean, not that obvious. <laughs> um, and you also sort of pick up as she's leading you through the halls past the other librarians. They don't seem to know who she is. Of course, Dickie goes to the one strange librarian. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Librarians Blame? are just weird. Spank my Betty. This is all his fault. I know. <laughs> I didn't I didn't want to do it just because I knew it was coming, but just the, the way that she was talking. Someone banish the other right. ads. Banish them. So as Dickie is following this librarian, Agatha will follow as well. But kind of do that like half walk to mm -hmm. where she backs up to Cliff. Something's not right here. I don't know what. Okay. Don't be on your guard. Okay. All right. And so she leads you uh, 
downstairs, down another flight of stairs, uh, down into the basement. Uh, and what looks like uh, admin offices. So they've got like names on the door, but as you walk past them, they look like they're not currently in use. Okay. It's a recession. Okay. <laughs> uh, brings out a key ring, unlocks the door. Uh, right this way, please. Mm. Yes, these are some pretty old books, huh? If you keep them down here with the old offices. Oh, yes, very old, extremely valuable. What's the. What is the like temperature down here? Is it dry? Is it. Dry and cool. Okay, good storage place for books then. Okay. All right. As Dickie shuffles through the doorway, he mm -hmm. just says, I forgot to ask, what's your name? Oh, um, it's been so helpful. Emily. Well, I'm Dickie. Thank you. Uh, and I will give Agatha this to carry your role forward. She's clearly lying. That is not her name. Mm. Is it dark where we're going? Yes. Like not not dark, but dim. I take out a flashlight, or I take out my flashlight. Okay. Uh, do you follow her all into the room that she's trying to get you into? Has she already gone into the room? No, she's standing uh, at the door. It's open, and she's like, uh, in here, if you please. It was right on in. Agatha no questions will, asked. <laughs> Agatha okay. will shift her bag from her left shoulder mm -hmm. to her right shoulder and put her hand in her bag. Okay. Because <laughs> this is shady. <laughs> and she All will right. say, ladies first. Oh, uh, it's no problem, please. I I need to hold the door open, otherwise it'll slam shut all on its own. Oh, I've got that for you because I'm really big and strong. I'll put my hand on the door. Well then, as you said, ladies first. Yes, that means we both go at the same time. And I'll put my left arm like <laughs> in interlocking with hers, <laughs> like we're walking through Skippily. Okay. And I'll start to walk through. How about Alex? Uh, yeah, I'm noticing the weirdness among my friends all of a sudden. <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of like noticing the weirdness. Can I give Mr. Reynolds a look? I just kind of shrug at Alex because the only reason I'm on guard at all is because of what Agatha said to me. Okay. <laughs> and I was not explicit. Yeah, I'm yeah. just like, uh, something's weird. Something's weird. So, yeah, I'm just. So, if you give me the like, something's weird kind of look, I'm like, okay. Yeah. Kind of just, uh, you know, shove my hands into my pockets where there might be something helpful, like a knife or brass knuckles, just in case. All right. So yeah, I'm and waiting. all together. <laughs> we enter in the... we go. <laughs> okay. Uh so Cliff, do you come inside? Yeah, first I kind of want to flash the light around to see if there's like, is there a light switch or something? So the lights are on, but they're okay. very dim, flickery light bulbs. Okay, then yeah, I'll go in. Okay. So as the door closes behind you. It closes very, very slowly. Hmm. So whatever she was trying to tell you about the door was not true. Hmm. I try to, yeah, okay. That's weird. Uh, and that is when she wheels on her heels, punches Agatha. Fuck that so, I do. 
everybody go ahead and open the combat tracker for me, please. And hey. Load up your character. Oh, no. It finally happened. <laughs> Sorry right. for duping you out <laughs> early on. Oh, yeah, oh no, we... no. This was all Betty's fault. Oh, God. How do we do uh, initiative? Don't we drag, don't we drag like our yeah. person? Yeah, so open the combat tracker, which is the little sword icon in the very top right. Mm -hmm. And then you should be able to drag your character into there. Nah, it doesn't seem to be working for me. Characters? I think you had to drag them in last time. All right. There we go. Uh -huh. okay. So Agatha and Alex and Cliff and Dicky. Oh, God. Oh, wow. Okay. So this one is attacking. Nope, that is not what I wanted to do. I'm so sorry, Agatha. Oh, Did you I'm marked now? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. You dead? I'm oh, marked, that's marked how we with do the it. death cult one. <laughs> nope, that is. I'm so sorry. The juxtaposed music that I'm there listening we go. to over here while this is happening is like fantastic. I know. I'm like bopping over here. All right, so she is going to attack. Why did I not have an attack? Okay. Oh, and that is a fail. She misses. Because I knew. Yes. Yeah. And then we have another one who's going to attack uh, Dickie. Another one? I saw my life flash before my eyes. It's just the lights. They just have people down here waiting. Yes. For people to ask for suspicious books. Oh, God. Why did you ask for that book, Dickie? Why? <laughs> This is why you're not allowed in the restricted section. Uh, fail to attack Dicky. Alex, it is your turn. Okay. Uh, we're going to use the method that has yet to work, but it's the only one I know. So uh, uh, Alex sees that, that lady attack mm -hmm. Agatha after they were chummy for a second, and then the punch happens. Mm -hmm. And goes, hey, and then just tries to do a nice spider monkey fighting brawl motion at her. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me your fighting, please. That's a no. Okay. God, I've got to <laughs> find a different method. Someone teach me to shoot a gun. We can do that. But All right. And this has brought you to the attention of uh, the third cultist what? who goes at you with a knife. Also failing. Maybe if they turned on the lights down here, one of us could make a hit somewhere. All right, Cliff, it is your turn. Okay, so I'm going to take out one of my guns and just fire it off into, like, into the air, I guess. Well, Okay. And away from people. Okay, like, I was. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's enough, everybody. And just kind of get the get the cultists and this woman to stop. They are not stopping. All right, then I'll use the other one to shoot one of them. All right, uh, go ahead and roll to attack, please. That will hit. Oh, regular success. All right. Who are you aiming at? Um, one of the cultists. 
Uh, probably the one that took a swing at um, Alex, because I know Alex was engaged with another one as well. Uh, Agatha was getting attacked, I think, first. And then I yes. attacked the one that attacked Agatha. So if you shoot that one. Right. And then a third one came out of nowhere mm-hmm. and attacked you, right? Yeah. Third one came there. The second one attacked Swarm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to. Oh, so three. Yeah. So I'm going to get, I'm going to go after the one that just kind of came out on Alex because of the fact that the way I'm imagining it is that that one's probably least engaged, I guess, is the best way to describe it. All right, so they get a dodge, which they fail. Okay. So go ahead and roll damage. Uh, nine. Okay. okay. All right, uh, they are hurt quite a bit, but they are still standing up. Agatha, what would you like to do? Well, I already had my hand on my gun in my purse. Okay. So I will pull it out at the one at, at Emily, apparently. Uh huh. Hopefully, as she's staggering past me. And uh, I don't want to kill her. I'm not, I'm, I'm not really a murderer, but mm-hmm. you're definitely going to get a shot somewhere in the, you know, I'll just shoot her in the leg. Okay. Go ahead, roll. Because I'm real good at, at firearms. Let me tell you what, I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's you a, pull out your no. gun, wildly shoot. It goes wide. Uh, Dicky, your turn. They picked on the wrong group as Dicky takes out his revolver, points it at Emily, just scared out of his mind, and is just yelling for it to all stop. Okay. Not gonna pull the trigger yet. All right, uh, that's what Dicky's doing. They do not stop. Yep. Well, I can do this. Oh, that's cool. Okay, round two. Uh, the cultist attacking Agatha. Oh, that is a twelve, Agatha. Please roll your dodge. Something I'm also great at. Oh, no. No. (laughs) Okay, in that case. Only one damage to you. And I think it auto deducts from your sheet. Uh, Oh, okay. I was about to say, how did I, how am I at nine already? Okay. (laughs) Oh, it did. Yeah, it says in the... Yeah, okay. All right. And then the one attacking Dickie will attack poor Dickie. Fail. Alex, it is your turn. All right. Uh, So if they pulled out a knife, I'm going to also pull out a knife. Okay. Uh, And... uh, Again, the one that so one the one that was attacking me got shot. And then because they missed me on that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and swing around and try to finish him off. Mm-hmm. Okay. I might. Okay, so. And you're attacking the one that's on Agatha? I was attacking the one, the third one, the one that uh, Colonel shot. All right. They're dodge. They succeed. Fine. Six. 
So. All right. The next cultist is the one attacking Alex. Oh, that is a success. So Alex, please roll me your dodge. That's a not, that didn't happen for me. Okay. And only one point of damage. Okay. Cliff. Yeah, so I'm going to walk up to the one that I shot and just kind of hit him with the butt of my pistol. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll that. Okay. There, dodge. No, so uh, go ahead and roll me 1d4. Uh, okay. So it's four plus I have a d6 strength bonus. Hold on. Four. All right. And it wasn't, ex it does a hard success double damage or is it just extremes? I believe extreme, but it doesn't really matter okay. uh, because they are down. All right. So you manage to just hit him right on the side of the head, knocking them out. Agatha, it is your turn. Mm. We're going to swing around. Uh, no, no, this was it the was it Emily that hit me? Yes, because you were sort of locking arms with her. Is she, are we still arm locked? Uh, I assume no. Okay. I'm going to shoot at her again, because like I said, I'm great at that. Okay. Go ahead and roll. I'm almost great at that. Okay. That's a fail. <laughs> All right. What is Agatha yeah. good at again? <laughs> <laughs> you threw the purse that one time. <laughs> yeah, but it didn't hit. <laughs> oh. Uh, Dickie, it is your turn. All right. Dickie, I'd imagine, like, dodges under a fist mm -hmm. from that cultist, whips around and pulls the trigger. Okay, go ahead and roll that, please. Yeah. Impressed by Dickie's athletic prowess. It's more of a, what was that? Oh, and yeah, it was. Oh, seven. Yeah, it was. Oh. You could spend one luck to make it extreme. I'm spending one luck. Nice. Do it. Okay. Extreme nice. success. Oh, my God. All right. I'm going to give them a dodge just for formality's sake. <laughs> well, that wasn't what I meant to do. Uh, Nope. They failed. They rolled a 92. Nice. Uh, so go ahead and roll your damage <clears throat> twice. That's amazing. Matrix Spore. style Dicky. Poor person. Oh. Were you shooting Emily or one of the cultists? <laughs> one of the cultists. Okay. Uh, six damage. Okay. All right, uh, so you, Dickie, just all of a sudden, you are back on Gettysburg. Uh, the past 60 years just haven't happened, and you just, once the bullets start whizzing, you're right back there, and so you duck around uh, and do, like, this slick move that you haven't pulled off for decades, but you totally get this cultist, like, right in the arm. They're still up, but they are hurt. They're not having a good day. Uh, but it is now Emily's turn. Emily's turn. Still going after Agatha. And she fails. Really That's hard. Right. Uh, but the cultist that Dickie has uh, injured is really unhappy about that. 
uh, but tries to attack him with his bad arm and does not succeed. Alex, it is your turn. All right. Uh, yeah, I really wish that that pawn shop had had like a better weapon of some sort to snag. But uh, yeah, so we're going to, uh, once again, me and my knife. Me in the basement with the knife. No, and I don't, I'm not spending 14. Okay. Is this one of those things you can push as well? You cannot push in combat, I'm sorry. Okay, all right, I wasn't sure. Thank you for letting me know. All right, Cliff, it is your turn. All right, I will try to do the same thing to Emily, just hit her with my pistol. Okay. Like... All hey. right. Roll her dodge. Oh, she fails. So. So seven. Oh, that's, that's impressive. She is still up. But is hurt. Agatha. All right, this gun isn't working. <laughs> Although I doubt anything is going to work. Agatha is Agatha's not a fighter. However, she has seen that Cliff uh, has been doing fairly well just by beating them with the gun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she also will try to beat them with a gun. All right. Go ahead and give me a brawl, please. Emily, feel the butt of my gun. And she does. That okay. awesome gun butt. You use them... the gun to hit people with, not shoot them. <laughs> you just don't shoot them. <laughs> we have discovered better. that Agatha is not ranged. <laughs> Agatha is melee only. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Emily totally fails that dodge. So go ahead and uh, roll me 1d4, please. Oh, a d4? Yeah, because uh, you're, yeah, you're hitting her. Uh, Do I get my any... damage bonus? You do. Which is an additional D4? Yeah. I'm doing two. Oh, wait. Uh, one. Two. A whole okay. three damage. Boom. Take that. Not Emily. All right. You continue to hurt her. Dicky. What would you like to do? Dicky does not want to commit murder on the same day as a funeral. <laughs> so after shooting this man, Dicky is going to try and flee this battle. Okay. Just right out the door if possible. All right. Uh, you start making your way to the door while all of this is happening. We advance to round four. Emily is really mad, gets out a knife, and uh, slashes at Agatha. Try. Fail. All right. Uh, the cultist who was on Dicky shifts their attention to Alex instead. Oh, no, I totally did it wrong. All right. So is it my turn or am I? No, uh, okay. I, I was trying to roll something and I fucked it all up. All right, sorry, sorry, sorry. I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. Nope, nope, it's fine. All right. Attacking Alex. Fail. 
Uh, so Alex, it is now your turn. All right. Uh, the one, this is the one who turned at me. This is Emily turned at me with a knife. Yes. Uh, right. Emily turned on Agatha with a knife, not you. Okay. Uh, who was it who just tried to attack me? The remaining cultist or the... Yes, the remaining cultist. Okay, gotcha. Cool. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just keep trying to like knife fight this. Go for it. Oh. I'm not a fighter either. If I maybe I'm ranged. <laughs> yeah. We have to we have to establish roles here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cliff. Yep. What would you like to do? Uh I am going to once more strike at Emily, trying to take her out of this fight. Okay. And I succeed with a All hard right. success. How's her dodge? Her dodge is bad. Go roll, roll that damage, please. Never. You will never dodge my attacks. Did it not get my D4? No, it didn't. Uh, it doesn't look like it. So four more damage. All right. Uh, she had four health points left, so she is down and unconscious. Right. So there is only one person left who it seems like uh, seeing their fellows go down has only enraged them uh, but before they can react Agatha it is your turn hmm. as the uh, hopefully some type of skull matter drips from the butt of my uh, my revolver I will turn to this last individual and say, no survivors. <laughs> oh, shit. I guess I go hard all over. All over <laughs> and I guess I will try to shoot somebody. <laughs> go for it. Oh, I got to remember to click brawl because I did hit. Just don't shoot me. Uh, here we go. Nope. Okay. Not even close. All right, Dickie, are you still uh, fleeing combat? Running out of bullets. <laughs> yeah, Dickie's running away. In the inevitable event, someone's going to run down here asking, what was that? Dickie can explain okay. before they just see us over a couple of bodies. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, the thing is, is they wanted to jump you here to cut down on the noise so uh they were planning on people not hearing you die apparently it's now nobody hearing them die but you you make it to the door all right emily is down is the next cultist who takes another slash at alex and that's a fail Alex, what would you like to do? Third verse, same as the first. Go ahead and roll it. Hallelujah. There you go. Uh -huh. I was All warming right. up. Let's see if they make their dodge. They do not. So go ahead and oh roll damage, please. Oh my gosh, it actually worked. Uh, oh. Yeah, so don't forget to tick the ticky box. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> That's hilarious. I finally get to do that. Uh, where did my knife go? Oh, wait, hold on. That didn't do the thing it needed to. Hold on, wait. I think I've accidentally lost one of my uh under the items. It's knife, small. That is a D4. Did it roll that? No. There it goes. Hey. All right. Dad. That's that poke poke. Take that. Okay. You slash them a little bit. They are damaged, but still standing. Cliff, it is your turn. Yep. Once more, I will try to crack this cultist in the face with the butt of my pistol. Because I don't want to kill anybody. 
Hard success. Excellent. Okay, let's see if they make their dodge. No. Oh, man. They did not make it by one point. So three more points. All right. They are very, very shaky, but still up. Agatha. Very, it's very shaky, you. you say. It's up to you. <laughs> Seeing that they're on the ropes. I don't have I need to make I need to make this a weapon. Somebody somebody at Chaosium or somewhere make this as a weapon. Handbag uh, with a brick in it. Handbag with a brick <laughs> in it. This is, I'm just gonna swing my handbag. All right. Uh do you have uh that'll be improvised weapons? Is that a skill? Uh, fighting. It, it's a subset of fighting. Oh, I don't have that. Uh, what fighting skills do you have? Just brawl. Uh, all right. In that case, just give me a raw dex check, please. Oh, yeah, because I'm good at that, too. <laughs> uh, here we go. I got it. Okay. Right on the money. Nice. Happened. Let's see if she makes her dodge. She does not. So go <laughs> ahead and roll me a d4 plus your strength bonus. Uh, oh, yeah, that's just 2d4. Another four. All As right. you take my brand new sturdy handbag to your face. Okay. So that ends as they drop, also unconscious. So here you all are, standing in this disused room of the library. Are there any books in here? Uh, there are a couple. They don't look very important. Just someone at some point set a couple books down on the desk here and never picked them back up. Uh, certainly none of the books, sadly, that you were looking for. Alex, see if, I think we should call the police. Yeah, I think so. Maybe we could get Lieutenant uh, Leahy over here, like, quick. Or is it Detective Leahy? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. Or, or Lieutenant Pool, right? Lieutenant, Lieutenant Detective. One of them. Yeah. All yeah. right. So you, what do you do with the unconscious cultists? Because there's uh, no, there's no phone in here. You're gonna have to go yeah, top side. They, how are the cultists dressed? Uh, so Emily, Emily was wearing uh the previous um you know, supposed to be nice, but not actually fitting in sort of dress clothes. Uh, the people who were attacking you, uh, they look like a working class, laboring class clothes, uh, but they have weird red headbands with strips of fabric hanging down from it. Is it like that same nasty as the, the guys yes. in the hotel room? Yeah. Do they have belts on? Uh, yeah. like rope belts, sure. Great. Uh, tie them up with their belts. Okay. And Emily, I guess we just tie her with that rope as well, if we can. I'll take off one of their head headdresses and unravel it. Okay. Yeah, it's it's about a yard of fabric. You can definitely tie them up. Nice. All right, so do you all four leave to go make the phone call, or do you leave someone down to guard them? I don't use a phone. I don't know how to use it, so I can stay here. <laughs> Man, just keep an eye on I'll go make the call. Just keep an eye on them. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll stand there with my revolver as if I'm going to do something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it seems like this is a very good moment to wrap for the evening. Excellent. Cliff making his way upstairs in search of a phone. Uh, Dickie, have you 
How have you changed course? Uh, Dicky. I think Dickie would have continued walking until Cliff briskly walks by him. <laughs> okay. And like looks up and nods like, all right, make sure no one comes down here together. Yep. So we took care of him. I'm calling the cops. Oh, you're calling the cat. All right. Well, I'm already halfway over here, so I'm <laughs> with you. They're all alive. All right. Uh, oh, all right. Good work. Okay. Having captured, captured maybe? Who knows? These cultists. Uh, this is where we will end this evening. So thank you all for playing. Thank you to our wonderful audience for watching. And of course, you know, we uh, complain when points are spent, but that's all part of the kayfabe. We appreciate <laughs> your yeah. interaction. It does make the stories better and more complex. Uh, and you inspire us to go deeper with our role play and more intricate with our cosplay. And that's always appreciated. So if you still hunger for the Vorpal content, don't forget to check out Delta Green on Monday nights, followed by Vorpal Tales After Dark with Mythos World. We also have Akhtang Cthulhu on Wednesdays. And if you just want more horror, we've got Black Void and Cult on Tuesdays and Sundays, respectively. And if that's still not enough, come find our Mage the Awakening show on Thursdays, followed by Pathfinder or Dungeons and Dragons on Saturdays. And stick around here because soon we will be running Scarred Lands, Draco Genesis. And if you want to stay up to date on our latest show offerings, calendar updates, and whatnot, come follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And if that's still not enough Warpal content in your lives, come hang out with us on the Discord. And so, investigators, tell us who you are, who you were playing, and when people can find you next on the internet. I am Dwayne. You guys can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi. I was playing a parapsychologist Agatha Merriweather, who we now found out is a melee character, not a ranged character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next time you guys can see me will be tomorrow. Uh, I don't remember the time. I'm sure, I will remember before tomorrow for the new Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Uh, Usurpers of Ruination. I think that's right. I'm going to be playing a druid. That'd be fun. Nice. Yeah. I've been Dicky. I'm also Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at True Kisama, and you can find me on Sunday for Fiasco. It'll be fun. Uh, and hello there. My name is Mare. You can find me at Oh Hello Mare on Twitch and Twitter. And the next time you can find me on Vorpal Tales will be next Thursday in our Mage game. But the next time you can find me on the internet will be on my own channel tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, I'm planning on just doing some chill, uh, either adventuring, playing Traveler's Rest, or diving into Minecraft as usual. Nice. And I am Dave. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at, at Twin De or at at slider dk but twin dead twitches um you can find me here on tuesday playing black void and then again on friday night here playing mess of dear lothotep excellent uh i have been your humble storyteller my name is rachel i am stolen fires pretty much everywhere on the internet uh you can find me next on sundays where i will be in cult and then Wednesdays playing some D&D over Plastic Age Plays, uh, Scarlands. It's a lot of fun. And then on Thursdays, running Changeling the Dreaming over at Onyx Path. And you can also find me uh, also on Thursdays with Mare playing our mage game. It, shit's got weird. It got real weird real fast. Does it even count as mage anymore? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't even uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't play a lot of mage games, but I don't even know if I would consider that mage anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, it's like Scion now, Nephilim, something like that. 
uh, anyway, come check that out on Thursdays. Uh, you can also find me Warple Tales After Dark uh, Monday nights, starting at nine o'clock Pacific, which is midnight on the East Coast. Um, yeah, and you can also follow me on Twitter to find out when I am streaming Dragon Age. Uh, so, and now it is time for our Ride or Die viewers. It is vote time. Uh, both cast votes and audience votes are worth a luck roll. So that means you roll 1d10 and you add that many luck points to your total. Do that once per vote. And so, in the normal order, go ahead and tell us uh, who impressed you with their role play? Who did you have a meaningful scene with? Who did you enjoy having around? I feel that uh, Agatha and Cliff were tag teaming well today, and the yeah. fact that Cliff saved us. Cliff saved us. <laughs> so Cliff will have my vote today. It's difficult because I wasn't here for a solid hour due to that darn assassination attempt. Uh, no coffee was involved. That's fake news. But my vote goes to Alex for that explanation. Of the recap from when I got back. It was very nice. <laughs> uh, my vote uh, actually goes to Tiki. Um, I just am very happy that I was able to help the kind gentleman get what he needed at the pharmacy. Uh, you know, and just uh, if uh, if he ever needs companionship, I like being there for the nice chip. So just being wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> And my vote goes to Agatha for the excellent, as always, handbag shot. I just love the handbag action. It's, it's got to happen at least once a session. Yeah. All right. Thank you all so much. Don't forget to make those luck rolls, especially the uh, luck rolls created you by our audience. Uh, and audience, stick around because we are about to go raid Devil's Luck Gaming and see what they're up to. Nice.